Hello everybody. Today we've got a spicy situation. I was busy doing other things on stream and I was alerted that Mason and PPD were going head to head about some drama. Not really drama. A decision in the game of Dota. So I have been filled in. The context is this. Banana slam jam. The debate is about when CM should leave the lane in order to pressure top. PPD left after a short while, Ursa versus Magnus. However, Mason argues that the enemies have good D push top and that their mid can TP to defend top. So the support should have stayed with him in his lane so that they could extend the laning stage. So this entire thing is going to come down to whether or not some CM is supposed to play with Ursa as long as possible or leave the lane in order to pressure Void. And then also, I have been told that PPD should have bought him a salve, basically. Mason's saying, I'm going to have regen issues against Phoenix Magnus. I want you to stay in my lane and salve me. And PPD is saying that he wants to pressure top. And Mason is also saying that the offlaner didn't need the help. So he didn't have to go top. It wasn't like Mars was having a really tough lane. So we're going to watch the game on Fast Forward from the very get-go, just to get an idea of what's happening in the lane. We're going to look at the CS. We're going to see... Oh, that's Network. We're going to look in general, like, status of the lane. What's CM contributing to the lane? How's the Ursa farming? CM's getting some double nukes in there. Doesn't look like she has to actually nuke the range creep, except for the fact that Mason misses it. Yikes. But okay. Lane's going pretty normal so far. We're actually going to get first blood. Well, at least the kill in lane. CM should be able to pull large camp now. Fast forwarding. Large camp pulled. I think Mason should have... Eh, nah, he did everything fine there. Fast forwarding. Looks like the lane is actually slightly in favor of Mag in terms of CS. But Ursa seems to be having a fine time because of the kill. See him continuing to threaten the large camp. They're nuking Mason a lot. He goes for the stick and boots. Ursa is actually kind of annoying to play. Like, it's annoying to play Ursa in the Phoenix in the landing stage. Lane's pushing again. Game's gonna pull small. So, I think what we can all agree watching this, this is pretty standard stuff. They're nuking out the lane and pulling the large camp in the lane where they're heavily favored. Get a kill. CM's probably going to salve him, right? Or does CM not have a salve? No salve on CM just yet. Definitely the support's job to fly out a salve. But, uh... So he leaves the lane on CM. So Mason flies himself a salve. So this is the moment that we have to ask. Oh, no, but CM has not left the lane yet. So well, CM comes back. Okay, so CM just went and checked Rune a little bit. So I will say as a carry player, in this lane, Ursa's going to have sustain issues. Because even though Ur it's kind of similar to like Ursa versus Timbersaw, you're favored, but you're going to get nuked a lot. And so the issue Ursa runs into is he wants to go like Treads Battle Fury usually, but he wants to go the Treads first, and then he runs into this whole like period of the lane where he doesn't have enough sustain to actually be aggressive. He does plenty of damage, and he has the capability of going on them just like this, but he doesn't have the ability to continuously be aggressive because of the regen problems. So, CM's going to... Okay, CM dies. And CM leaves his lane. Oh, CM comes back. I agree with this so far. Everything I've seen so far makes sense to me. This lane has been played perfectly fine by all parties. Ursa dies. They get two kills. Pango teepees. CM dies as well. 
So this is about where it's happening, right? So CM leaves lane and ditches him. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. So this is where the debate comes in. So we're gonna rewind a bit. We're gonna like act like we don't know that CM died there. Like we're gonna act like the rotation is just possible with the rotation. Like meaning like whatever is possible from this rotation is possible. So Mason's respawn. A little bit of pressure being applied mid. Mars having a pretty decent lane. Voids level five. He's already committed to bottom lane with this TP, which I think is fine. What's PPDC? He has no TP for 20 seconds. He's going to walk towards mid. Which I think is fine. And what does he do? He's going to smoke towards top? Towards He's going to go back to mid. Okay. So I do think it's fine that PPD took over mid lane. I think this is fine. And now what? I'm watching it from PPD's perspective. He fed. And he goes back. And he comes back bottom. So the debate is whether or not PPD should have stayed bottom. So this is an interesting game, right? Because when I say interesting game, it's an interesting situation. Because what I'm hearing is that Mason was adamant that PPD was supposed to stay bottom. Uh, in a lane where the times that I demand my supports to stay in my lane is when I'm strong, I want help, and my strength is amplified significantly by a support. So for instance, in my game yesterday, I was Snapfire off lane with a tiny four position and a lane against Void Lich. It was a lane where if Lich came up to nuke me, if Tiny was there, he died, eh, the Lich would die. If the Tiny's not there, the Lich can kind of just freely nuke me. So in that lane, by being there, Tiny completely prevents Lich's aggression, which allowed me to bully the Void. And that's an example of a lane where the support's presence is very impactful. Okay, that's, the ex that's an example. That was in the off lane, but it's a similar idea, because Ursa's a very aggressive hero. So from PPD's perspective, what I see is this. I see that he wants the Void Spirit to rotate to the Faceless Void, because the Faceless Void has no Chrono, not really able to defend himself, boot him out of his lane. And then he wants to take the mid lane, because that's what most four or five positions will do when they're mid rotates. That's very popular in this current meta. And what Mason's thinking is, is that, we're gonna rewind to his perspective, is that CM leaves his lane, and after CM leaves, Mag is nuking him with a bunch of shockwaves, and he doesn't quite have, he has his ring of health, but he has to go get it with the courier. And he's running out of region. So he's actually having to give up the lane to Mag because of the fact that CM's not here anymore. So we're going to continue just watching for this like three minute period. So, I'll be honest with you guys. What I saw is that Mason had to play a bit more passively. Uh, whenever I'm against a mag, I'm usually not all that concerned with shutting down the mag. Usually the mag is kind of whatever. He's going to empower himself, empower his carry, and maybe his beginning gives him like a mech or something, or like a blink. But after that, he ends up not really farming anymore anyways. And I would consider Void to be the hero they have to shut down. And the way that you shut down Void or any hero with Empower is that you invade the triangle. And to invade the triangle, as we've talked about with Order of Objectives, you have to take the top tier one, then the mid tier one, and then you invade the triangle. Like that's pretty much what has to happen most times. That's usually the two objectives you have to get. So it all starts with whenever this, mid, this top tier tower goes down. And so when CM rotated to mid, we see that Void Spirit goes top. He smokes the Void Spirit at the top. And when Void Spirit goes top, 
Let's see what happens with it, right? This is what happens because the CM rotated. Void Spear gets a kill on the enemy carry and turns it into a tower in the next minute and a half. I see here, right? This tower ends up dying about a minute later. Mars gets an entirely free wave. Tower is taken. So what I am seeing is that Void was able to, able to occupy top lane. Void was not having a good lane, meaning he was in a similar spot to what the Ursa was in, meaning that he wasn't able to bully the Mars. He was farming jungle and rotating back to tower, similar to what we saw Ursa doing. And by rotating, the Void Spirit killed him, and then they took the tower. So I would argue that CM's rotation to mid is really good. Because if the mid laner rotates and no support takes over mid and gets the experience, that usually is a massive inefficiency. Usually it is not worth the mid laner rotating if neither of the supports take over the lane. So in these type of situations, to judge who's correct, I just have to take the before and after of the lane that he left and the lanes that he took over on the side of the CM. So what I'm seeing from Ursa is that he would probably be able to be a bit more aggressive on Mag. But to be honest with you, I don't know if I want to be aggressive on Mag. Because Mag does have RP, Ursa's going to have sustain issues. And at any point, if Ursa gets worn down, it's very tempting for Phoenix and or Pangolier to just come back to his lane. So I personally believe wherever the Radiant dedicates their resources is where the opponent's also going to dedicate their resources. And if you try to fight the guy that's strong, the Mag then the opponent's going to be very likely to help him. But notice how the Void, who has no Chrono, he doesn't get any help. The opponent team, they don't take their resources and say, hey, I'm going to go help this Void that has no Chrono. So I feel like if CM were to have stayed bottom, then what would have actually happened was maybe Mars would be forced to TP bottom to help, which then alleviates the pressure on Void because the other team would have probably bought, brought the Pangolier as well as the Phoenix to go fuck with the Ursa. Because they see two heroes on the Radiant being dedicated to bottom, and they think, oh, M Phoenix plus Mag plus Pango can just bully the shit out of them. Because when Void Spirit's sitting mid, they're not going to try to kill him, like, on the enemy team. How do they kill face? How do they kill Void Spirit without Bane 6, right? So notice how the only reason there was a kill mid on the side of the opponent team was because CM took over the lane. So what I see is that PPD's actually alleviating pressure on Mason by going to the mid lane, which allows the Void Spirit to pressure the Void. Whenever I'm a Battle Fury builder or a hero with Mag on my team, I am very concerned about losing this tower, and I'm very concerned about losing this tower because then I will be booted to the triangle, and it is inevitable that the opponent will contest me at the triangle. So while I may have a built-in Battle Fury with this in power, and I would like to start going and farming Ancients, I don't want to leave my safe lane. Because a lot of times, if I stay in my safe lane, that means that safe lane tower is being left alive. And then my team is usually stacking Ancients. And then I can just go farm them. And I'll be able to farm them for five minutes usually, regardless. Like, I usually get the triangle around five minutes of time that I get to farm it. If I start that five minutes at ten minutes with no Mask of Madness or anything, then that, ten min that five minutes I have farming, I'm hitting neutrals with these items. Rather than neutrals with a full Mask of Madness, for instance. So... I even talked about it in my PA game, which was in another video I recorded, which I went as many items as I could on my way to a Battle Fury in order to occupy my lane. And I would argue that this rotation by Crystal Maiden made the Void leave his lane, which whenever I'm Void and a hero with built-in and power, that I would prefer to stay in my own lane as long as possible and not give up my tower. Meanwhile, Mason continued to farm bottom, has his items, is hitting some neutrals. It's not like he has no CS. He's ahead of Void in the CS department. And he's not losing his tower. So what I'm seeing here is an overall map control gain by virtue of the CM leaving the lane. So I think it's something that I've done, Pony. Um, I'm not bashing Mason. I think it's really hard from the carry role specifically to see the grand picture of the game because... Usually the game revolves around your timings. It revolves around your hero. And it's I've noticed that ever since I started playing other roles, that I really felt the impact of movements more 
than I did when I played carry. Because as a carry, you just want good farm. That's usually what it feels like. But as like a support, you see all these other things that PPD is seeing and that I'm trying to talk to you guys about. And in this specific case, I can understand why Mason would want PPD to stay bottom. But I think it's actually better to pick on the weak heroes and force towers as long as you're also not losing your own. And in this case, that's exactly what PPD did. And I'll definitely have to rule this case in favor of PPD. Sorry, Mason. I understand your thoughts, but I do think it was a net positive movement from Peter there. If you enjoy this type of content, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Because at the end of the day, the YouTube algorithm cares about all three of those things, even though I may not. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. See you next time.